you know, in total, I probably put in about 10 years, you know, back and forth in pen throughout my life. And I just was one of those dudes that, you know, had someone in my ear, even though I didn't take all the jewels and run with it, but I took some of it, and that was my father. I, I, you know, I didn't have the excuse like a lot of dudes. Um, basically, my father's not around, or my mama's on drugs. I come from a, a tight knit, good home. You know what I'm saying? And my father used to always tell me like, every man needs to know his limitations. You gotta know when to say enough is enough. And at some point, I said enough is enough, and that's what saved me from doing a thousand years in the penitentiary. Mm. Right. I know that's right. Let me um. We gotta get to this topic that brought us here. Um, love did. Can you tell me what year did you first was? Introduced to Mob Deep and Prodigy and all of that? Yeah, um, I met Littles first. I want to say, oh, that's 2005, maybe. 2005, 2006, I was introduced to Littles through one of my peoples that just came home from up north. He served time for a body, then he came home, then he got caught up in the drug case, and then he did a bunch of time, and he came home, and he, you know, along his journey, he met Littles. And, um, I, I, you know, I write. I was an artist at the time. I was looking to become an artist. And he introduced me to Littles. Um, his name is Pizzo. Right now, he called himself Success, um, which was one of um, my peoples that was under the Danny Diamonds regime. Also, his brother, V.I., which is my brother, he was the lieutenant of the team, you know, under Danny Diamonds, and Pizzo was his younger brother, and that was the connection with me and Littles. To you and Littles. And okay. Yeah, me and Littles. And from there, when Littles heard me, he like, yo, I want to get you on some joints. I want to work with you. You know, so I'm like, all right, cool. And at this time, Littles and them didn't know basically who I was in terms of the things that came with me as far as I'm going to say my legend. Okay. So one um, day Queensbridge Day we went out there introduced me I, you know he introduced me to Prodigy and Havoc and only like I've been telling them about you or whatever, whatever he goes out there and they found out that day who I was from Big Lord, um, Nas role manager. And uh, um, when he explained to them who I was, because I know him from the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. So when he explained to them who I was, they was like, wow, we didn't know that. Now you know. And then that's how the rapport got built between me and Prodigy and Havoc and, you know, Storm and Okay, so initially you had intentions of doing some music with them niggas some type of way, well, with Little some type of way, or something like that? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a fact. Um, during the time, I was, you know, going through my things. I'm a single father. I was a single father at the time. Right. And I was just trying to make my way, you know, because I had my, my, my seeds. I wanted to build some type of future for them and I always was knew how to rap you know what I'm saying I felt I was better than a lot of people and I was and I thought that was the avenue that was going to take me to where I needed to be so I jumped on board because you know this was what was told to me you know, make good artists 
you know, um, so I jumped in. Let's, let's, right, let's go. Right, right. So, but look, right, as time progressed, your position amongst them it kind of changed from yeah explain because it's it's known that littles was like their manager at the time right yes well it, when when i came on board no he wasn't their manager at the time chris light they was under volley and as time went on he became their manager um during this time, he was just doing a lot of groundwork for Harvey. Right. And then it, it led into him becoming their manager. And our, um, it was, you know, it was cool for the most part. How long How long was your time spent with them? It's not, not real long, maybe a year. Right. So, ultimately, just... With no sugar coat, Littles was kind of like they manager security. Is that what? What ultimately became of the relationship with with, with them? Or yeah. pardon me? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So he was like a muscle. Um. <laughs> he was. He, he became their manager, and yeah, he, he was holding them down. Okay. You know. Through the course of that, because that's your guy, you kind of, you kind of like, ended up, it basically ended up being whatever Littles was on, that's what you was on. Um, yeah, for the most part, because basically I was always taught, if you walk with him, you ride with him. I didn't sign up for that. I was there to be an artist. And then things kind of turned into that. And if I'm with you and things are transpiring, I'm going to be there. I'm going to hold you down. Right. For the most part. So it, it, it went from me wanting to, me becoming an artist, you know, which they was more or less like, yo, we like you as an artist. But, I also was basically a goon, so it wasn't like, okay, um, I came here to do this. No, I signed up to be an artist. I was just being who I am. And when things came about, I was handling my business. Right. The way I've been handling my business before I met any of them. Got it. During this, what, what, what year was this? What years was this? This was 2006 when I started rocking with, you know, when I got to the point where I was, you know, from the off people or so with Littles. This was like 2005, 2006. So this is prime DVD era. During this time. Yeah. Prodigy Excuse me. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My timing is off. I was rocking with them, and it was the end of 2003, going into 2004, and part of 2000, like 2005. So this is this is like the beginning of the DVD era. They was kind of like Prodigy stayed in some shit, like you know, some rap shit. MCs and shit like was this around the um I don't know he was beefing with Saigon Jay Z Max B like this is the the, the DVD era was this around the time I, I just want to get some clarity on the the exact time yeah, time period it's it's definitely around that time you know because one of the I have to say one of the pioneers to that DVD the era was Littles. You know, I remember when Smack was new. Because me and Littles is on one of the first Smack DVDs. Mm. So, you know, yeah, it was definitely during that era. Stayed in some confrontations. Was those 
was you ever confronted or had? Yes, a few times. A few times we clashed with um, G Unit one time. Um, we also clashed with you know Lakey the Kid and them. You right. Know, Nas and them. Right. We're gonna get you to know, that it shortly. Was, it, it, yeah, it was different situations that came about that you know could have went all the way to the left, and I'm I'm glad it didn't because you know looking back at all of this like I was going to be who I was going to be and I was going to do who I do what I was going to do and at the end of the day I would have been the one that paid the ultimate price for all of that and I seen that right so what, a lot of things in, you know what did you think about Prodigy I'm saying Prodigy was cool you know for the most part you know he was cool with me I, I, I never had no personal problem with Prodigy or Havoc. In fact, I liked Pete, and I liked Havoc. You know what I'm saying? Um, I never had no personal issues with them. You know, um, I knew that, you know, Prodigy was a cool dude, and, you know, even though he got into things because he was outspoken, he was not what you know a lot of people thought he was I'm, and I'm speaking about fans because you know a lot of them they listen to these records and hear what these rappers are saying on these records and they and they believed him right you know these dudes was not that at all okay um, rest in peace to Prodigy. I want to go into this situation that happened that um, the, the, what's being referred to. Shout out to um, DVD Era TV. Uh, what, what's being referred to as the Central Park Brawl. Can you take me back to that? You was present at that, right? Yes, I was. And, um, you know, first and foremost, you're right. Rest in peace. To a prodigy, rest in peace to Bandana, rest in peace to Tahini, and all of the brothers on both sides of the fence that lost their lives in the struggle. Now, what happened was we came, we got to the park, and we were walking to where, you know, Used to rock directed to go to the backstage. And, so um, this was a show. This was a this was a concert. To just this that's what. Yeah, this was it was a concert outside in Central Park. Okay. And they had backstage. They had like a um. It was like a gate we walked through, and all of that was fenced off. People couldn't come back there. So, you know, that's what, and it was you know basically connected to the stage. Right. So when we get there, um, we were confronted by Lakey, Lakey the Kid. At this time, I didn't know who Lakey was. And um, he walked up to Prodigy and he grabbed Prodigy Chain and I could hear him say, like, now what was that when shit you, you said on that record? Hold on. When, when you say you, he grabbed his chain, he snatched it or he, like, just... No. No, no, he didn't snatch it. He just grabbed it. He, I thought he was gonna snatch it. He grabbed it. the chain or he grabbed the pendant? He grabbed the he grabbed the pendant. The piece, okay. The the, 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 the chain is the pendant is on the chain. On the chain, all right. So when I say the piece, that means he because if he would have snatched the pendant, it was all coming off. Chain and everything, all of that was coming off. So he grabbed the pendant and he asked Prodigy. Now, what was that shit she was saying? And before Prodigy can answer, Little's interjecting. Like, yo, what you doing? Yo, you know them dudes with me. And um, Lakey says something to the effect of what business is digital yours or something like that. Because I know Little's was like, this is my business. 
or he said, yo, this is none of your business. And Littles was like, this is my business. And that's when him and Lakey started having words. And like I said, I don't know Lakey the Kid at this time. So we on goal time. Right. But Taheen, Little's brother, more or less, like, put his hand, you know, in front of me, like, yo, bro, chill. You know, let my brother handle that. Right. So, we got like, all right. So, Lakey and Little's, they talking, and we walk through the gate, they still arguing. Now, you had other people at this time. I was, I was on goal time. Right. So I didn't see my man Big Lord in the middle trying to mediate the situation between Lakey and Littles. But it was so much going on while they was talking. You had other people beefing too and some of the people on Lakey's side was beefing and niggas were standing next to me and they was talking hot and I did what I'm used to doing. I popped off. I, I, I popped off. Like, you know, and, 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 and that's where it went to the left. Um, so you threw, so you I, threw I, the first punch? Yes. Okay. And maybe the second and third also. All right. So you, you, you rumbling with the niggas that Lakey's with while he, Prodigy, and Littles. Is still in the con. They still in a confrontation. Littles. Like, how do he get him up off, up off a of, uh, prodigy's chain? They took um, prodigy and havoc and took them to the stage. Oh, they so, they was right, they was going to perform. Yeah, they was there to perform. So they went to the stage as soon as we got back there, and Littles and Lakey was still going back and forth. And they whisked them off to the stage, so they weren't even over there when when when, when the brawl was going down. They was on stage. So the brawl and all that okay, was going on. hold on. If they was on the stage, and I'm not trying to refute anything, but I'm a journalist, I do investigative shit in regards to hip hop. You said they was on the stage. Yeah. Prodigy wrote about this in his book, right? My infamous life. And okay. he, he wrote about the Central Park. I mean, he's, yeah, he, he wrote about the Central Park brawl. And he was saying that, you know, niggas was getting fucked up, getting cut and shit like that. Didn't nobody get cut? Wasn't no, didn't, didn't nobody get stabbed that night? No, and it wasn't at night. It was during the day. It was in the afternoon. Okay. This is, okay, it was during the afternoon. Nobody got stabbed, though? Nobody got stabbed. No, not, no cutting. No blades. No blades. It was some cutting, but it wasn't no blades or no knobs. I think, you know, the dude, one of the dudes I popped on, he was leaking, you know, but that was about it. It wasn't no, it wasn't no knobs or no razors or anything of that. Right. You know, and it wasn't like a big malee, like a bunch of dudes brawling. It was just me and my man, Javon. Brawling with Lakey's people. Right. And what is he and Ludo's doing while this is going on? Why the, the, you know, the fisticuffs is going on and shit, like. Ludo's was still arguing. And then Lakey arguing. And Bandana and them was over there. They was just not doing nothing. Right. And you say you didn't, you didn't have no, um. Did you even know what this shit was about? No. At the, you just felt that they came a little bit aggressive. Yeah, that's pretty much what it was. They was aggressive, and you know when aggression gets met with aggression, when there are on both sides, you got real dudes on both sides. You know, and that's basically what it was. They their approach was aggressive. Right. You know, and I pretty much finished it off like that. Did you expect 
of course, you know, because they was gun busting and shit like that. Did you expect this, the fight, to go on and, and lead to something more severe like, like... Yeah, I suspected it. Right. Because you have to understand, like, Lincoln and them is not no suckers. You know, they dudes also that's cut from the same cloth. We just come from different neighborhoods. Right. Different boroughs, but we all the same kind of dudes. Not all of us, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, Reiki and certain dudes is cut from the same cloth that I'm cut from and my niggas is cut from. So, of course, when things clash like that, me being in the wars and in the 80s and in the 90s of course I expected that of course I expected it to right. pick up some steam after that especially dudes might feel a certain way because you know like I said I'm not glorifying this I wish it didn't happen I didn't sign up for this it's just I was put in a situation where I felt disrespected and I put hands and feet on dudes. So I, I figured it would go to that. When next did, step. When did you get hip to Lakey's, you know, name and reputation? Like you said, they get busy too, like, but at the time you didn't know him, but when did you get hip to who he was and all of that? Right after that. Because, okay, here's the thing. During this time I wasn't living in Brooklyn no more. I was living in Queens in Left Rack City. Mm -hmm. And they were frequently visiting Left Rack City. And they had gay peoples that lived in Left Rack City that was originally from Queensbridge. You know what I'm saying? Right. That I was cool with. You know what I mean? And dudes was giving me the, 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 the info on Lakey and who they were and what they was about. And I mean no disrespect to Lakey, Soup, none of them. But I'm a gangster. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? A real dog and them is real dudes. So am I. Right. And I'm, if nigga want that smoke, I'm outside. Right. And that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's how I, be, I knew who Lakey was. And then when I go back home, Cause I, I, you know, I'm always in Brooklyn. I run into certain dudes like my man Big H from Sumner. Salute. H had a rapport with Lakey the Kid. Lakey the Kid had a rapport with one of my teammates from the Marcy Posse, Shushan, Gio. So niggas is telling me like, yo, bro, and they not telling me like, yo, dude, is this and that. Because they know I ain't give shit about none of that. You know what I'm saying? I get it in two. But it was more or less like, yo, bro, he's people. Right. And he's a, and he's a real nigga like us. And we don't want to see that go down like that. Because you a real dude. He's a real dude. You live out there. You know what I'm saying? Y'all going to bump heads. And we don't want that to go down like that. Especially over what we was for what it was Going about, through. yeah. What what the whole situation was about, it wasn't like it wasn't worth it, and and, and that's basically what it was because everybody disappeared at the end of the day, and I'm still outside. So did y'all get to talk? Yeah, we we ended up talking because um one of the individuals I would like to shout out, rest in peace to Billy Bang, legendary straight-up gangster from Queens. He passed away, and I stepped up to the plate with his son, Prophet. That was my little man, like my nephew. I, I loved him, you know what I'm saying? And Lakey did the same thing, you know, stepped up and threw him under the wing because Lakey loved him. And he loved me, and he loved Lakey. Like, I'm like his uncle, and Lakey like his own. So he the one out of all of these people 
the youngin is the one that brought me and Lady together. Like, yo, nah, this can't go down. I love both of y'all. Can y'all please talk and figure this out? And that's what we did. You know what I mean? Um, something that, you know, could have took place from the beginning. You know, at the end of the day, a lot of people don't understand in a lot of situations, it don't have to go from zero to 10. You know what I'm saying? Right. When it, all it takes is a conversation. You sit down like real men. Between generals, though. Iron it out. Yeah. Exactly. Between generals. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now, rest in peace to pee again in defense of Lakey the Kid. You know what I'm saying? Also, I'm going to say in defense to Littles because at the end of the day, Littles ended up falling out with them. In defense of them, getting to know Prodigy, I can tell you that Prodigy was a dude pretty much that will make you want to do something to him. You know, because his demeanor you know, and the things that he would say. And, you know, when you got a person that that says slick things and they have they project this image of being something that you are and you know that this person is not that. You know what I'm saying? And you and, 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 and you might see this person and you might give him a pass. You let him know that wasn't cool. Don't do it again. And then they do it again. Now it's a problem. And I think that's the the um the issue that Lakey had with him. I don't know what he said on the record. I never knew what he said on that record. Littles and them never told me. Lakey never told me. Prodigy never told me right. what he said on that record to piss throwing them off like that but whatever it was Lakey was pissed and I think it went to that degree with Littles and because it wasn't with Littles it was with Prodigy and I think basically the reason why things went the way it went number one Lakey was a victim of his reputation Right. number two Littles is not no sucker so he felt disrespected. Like, you know these dudes with me. You did? Right. And he felt disrespected because I did hear Lakey at one time say to Littles, oh, you a gangster now? Yeah. And Littles was like, I, I've been a gangster. And it went from there. So when you get dudes in a setting and both of them have similar reputations of getting busy. You know what I'm saying? And no one's going to back down. You got eagles flying. You know, bad things is going to happen. And that's what happened. You put a bunch of real dudes, you know, of both sides in a small setting. And everybody feel like they get busy. It's going to turn into something, and unfortunately, it did. And the good thing about the whole situation is that it didn't go to the point where niggas is walking that company for 100 years, and it's a bunch of candles being burned because niggas done got, a bunch of niggas done got killed over a situation that could have just really been talked, talked about. out. Right. And ironed out at the table. Right. Right. All right, we got some clarity on that. So it, he kind of exaggerated the, the Central Park thing in the book in regards to the, the yeah. stabbing and all that. Nobody got cut with a knife. Nah. All right, one of the last things I have to ask you, um, getting back to the Danny Diamonds DVD, there was a portion of the DVD when you kind of like displayed some the, like disgust when you was discussing Jay-Z's name. Did you have some type of acrimony or feelings about Jay-Z at a point in time? Yeah, at a point in time, you know, 
Um, me and Jay had a, a real great rapport, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, basically to do something. And then he didn't do it. And, you know, we stand on certain shit. So that's basically what it was. I was kind of in my feelings because he didn't keep his promise to me, you know. And uh, um, that was pretty much it. I, 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 You know, a lot of things, like I said, um, I told you um, prior that I have a pr- few projects that I'm working on. You know, we're going to revisit the Danny Diamonds project. Right. We're doing that all over with my man Porky from um, Virginia, you know. Um, also, I'm working on my documentary, Nine Lives. Um, it's going to be epic. So you're going to get uh, a lot of things in detail, you know, as far as the Danny Diamonds, as far as the Jay-Z situation, you know, behaving the I know the truth. You have the A side, the B side, and in the middle, you have the truth. And right. that's me, the truth. I'm going to give every, I'm going to give the world the true story on all of this. And, you know, with Jay, basically, yeah, I felt a certain way. And it was more or less because certain things happened and the rapport me and Jay had, I just felt that he could have came to me and talked to me because that was my man. You know what I'm saying? Right. He could have came in and hollered at me, you know, like, yo, this is what it is, this is what it is. And like I said, he he told me something that he was going to do and then it didn't come into fruition. You know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't stand on it. And I was in my feelings. But then as time went on, I had to look at both sides you know what I mean I had to look at it from his point of view from his view and basically I understood why he made the decisions that he made you know you got a lot of people bent out of shape about what Jay didn't do and what he's doing you know what I mean and the only thing I can honestly say about that is Jay did, you know, exactly what any one of us was going to do. And that was in the best interest for him and his family. Right. And whether right. dudes like it, dudes like it, they dislike it, whatever, you have to respect it. He did what he had to do for him and his first and foremost. Oh, yeah. And then... There was a lot of other elements in between. Like I said, I'm going to give full detail on nine lives coming soon. Full detail on what really transpired because it, 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 it was a lot going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, salute to the whole. You know what I'm saying? Through it all. Hey, 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 love. The fact. Yeah. Was you around when him and... um? Like, was you in the projects getting money and shit as him and Jazzo was coming up and rap? Of course. That was in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? We were getting money, and they were rapping. You know, through the Hawaiian Sophie, and that was Jazz and them, like, Jazz first album, Jazz records. They was doing, back then, we was selling, we was selling crack. Right. We was selling crack and slinging them hammers, but... You know, um, Jazzo always was a great artist. I, I I feel that, you know, he should have got his flowers. Ben got his flowers. Um, Jay, great artist. And, and like I said, salute to, to, to Jazzo, salute to Ho. At the end of the day, you know, you got a lot of people that hate Jay and hate Jazz and hate this nigga. And hate, I don't hate nobody. You know what I'm saying? Those are like... You know, we all have like distant family that we don't see, we don't, we might not be in tune with, might have love for them, but they're just not around no more. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is, and that's the case with them. Like, salute to the homies, man. And for the most part, dudes have to understand and respect the fact that Jay came from the same 
cloth he came from, and he's a billionaire right now. True story. You know what I'm saying? From the project. And he, yeah, exactly. And he don't have to. He don't have to do anything. He don't. You know what I'm saying? That's his. He worked for it. So, you know, salute to everyone. You know what I'm saying? On that side. You know, Jay, Emery. You know, Emery was a good fucking dude. That's that's my guy. You know, um, Tata, Beehive, all of them. You know, they doing what they got to do. And I wish them all the best on their whatever endeavors they on right now. Salute. Right. Right. Love, I appreciate your time, man, having the patience to yeah, run back through this lot, with man. me, man. We had to make sure we got this shit right. In closing, man, yeah. you want to give some shout-outs to your comrades? Of course. First and foremost, I want to shout-out the almighty God, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to breathe, wake up every day, another year, you know, he gave me the chance to smack in the face of all the people that told me I wouldn't live to see 21. <laughs> well, we're decades later and I'm still here, y'all. So, first of all, salute to him. I want to salute to all my, my, my dead people. There's so many. I can't even name them all, but a, a few of them. Shushan, R.I.P., my cousin Kone, rest in peace. My brother Tilo, rest in peace. My brother Trini, rest in peace. Big Unique, rest in peace. Ella, rest in peace. And the list goes on. And you know, all the comrades, Turf, Snipes, City, Shady B, Black Knowledge, rest in peace to my brother Hash, Polite, Killer Ben, all the brothers and queens. Left frack that showed me the love and respect that I deserve um, from Snoop to Trevor TB, uh, um, 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 Big Lowe's, um, Dre. I salute them all, man, from everywhere, all my cities, North Carolina, Boston. I want to salute to my brothers, Reese and Earl, E. Boogie, um, Big June, and them from Orchard Park, Interville. You know, Roxbury, salute. North Carolina, salute. Maryland, salute. South Carolina, salute. VA and all the other cities that I've been in, salute to my brother Paulie from Alexandria. And once again, free money grip, man. Yeah. That's been, um, it's been a pleasure, man. I'm about to get up out of here, man. Again, love. Thanks. I'm going to um, go ahead and get to, get to this editing process, man, and get this shit right out to the public so we have some clarity on this whole situation to happen in Central Park. Shout out to DVD Era TV. Um, and shout out to Lakey the Kid in HB. But I'm up out of here, man. I appreciate you, G. All right. Yeah. You too, bro. Salute. Yeah. Peace.